Hello, my name is Ola, and I'm going to react to Catwoman by Nostalgia Crick. This was recommended to me by Hawk William or Hawk Williams, uh, Eric William, no relation, <laughs> I don't know, and uh, Athanasia S. Thank you for the request. Um, wow, that rhymes. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, I'm going to be looking at a uh, Nostalgia Critic's uh, review for Catwoman. Um, yeah, I remember going and seeing this movie in theaters when it first came out. Honestly, the only reason why I like this movie was because of the cats. Just the cats. Like, <laughs> just honestly, everything else was kind of stupid. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It was like somebody said, you know what, what if we make Catwoman a dominatrix and see what happens? Like, and also, there's no Batman. Like, not a single sign of him, from what I can tell. Um, yeah, and since then, I think because of this movie, they've been, like, kind of hesitant to make another, like, uh, like, female lead superhero movie, you know. Till finally Wonder Woman came out, and uh, I think, yeah, Captain Marvel came out then, which that one was honestly okay, like, meh, but uh, I really liked uh, the Wonder Woman movie. Uh, Wonder Woman 1984, I was uh, kind of nah. Like, some, some things about it were cool, and some things about it were not, like, like the whole thing with Diana making her wish for Steve to come back and he had to come back in like some other dude's body. That kind of like made me like, what? Why would they do that? <laughs> but that's for another time. Let's talk about this one. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see what Nostalgia Creek thinks about it. More than likely, it's probably going to be the same way how I think about it. Like, it's kind of stupid. <sighs> Anyway, yeah, check this out. If you want to like, comment, subscribe my channel, can if you don't want to, that's fine too. Here we go. Okay, I think we've made some real progress today. I think that Miss Hathaway talking about the benefits of winning her Oscar shows us all how we can move on from not starring in our own Catwoman movie. Oh, please. Miss Pfeiffer disagrees? Yes, Miss Pfeiffer disagrees. Michelle Pfeiffer. They talked about making a Catwoman movie for years, and I was supposed to play the part. But they waited too long, and the fan base died down, resulting in that abomination with Halle Berry. Shh! You know we never mention she who must not be mentioned. But aren't you technically mentioning her? It doesn't matter. Pfeiffer's role should have been my role to begin with. Yes, Sean Young. We all remember how you ambushed Tim Burton dressed as Catwoman in order to force him to put you in the role. And that's not comedic writing. She really did that, folks. Still doesn't matter. Barry stole the role from all of us, and she ruined it. Yes, it was the first time a Catwoman had been given the leading role, and she botched it up forever. Yes, and she has never paid for her actions. Now, now, ladies, let's stay focused, okay? Uh, Eartha Kitt, I believe last week we discussed how you felt like a cat man trapped in a cat woman's body. No, I agree Holy with crap. them. We should keep our focus on the pussy bitch who stole our chances to shine. If it wasn't for her, one of us could be the definitive cat woman. Aren't you dead? Kit Kat is right. It's time for retaliation. We can't just sit here all day and listen to this half-wit psychic analysis. Psycho. What did you call me? The counselor is name calling this group is falling apart! We need to take action! We will get our leading role! Rolling ours! Unite! <sighs> now ladies, ladies, this is getting out of hand. Now the cat woman is so my despised that no one would ever write that character in a leading role. Okay? I doubt you could even get the lead in the Catwoman Review. The what? The Catwoman Review. The one coming out this week. By who? That guy. <laughs> Hello, I'm the 
the nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to when the movie batman returns came out people mostly had one reaction the hell was that <laughs> but they also had another reaction catwoman was pretty cool and thus a movie based on the anti-hero was in development forever Tim Burton went wow, back and forth long? on the project, Mitchell Pfeiffer went back and forth on the project, scripts were rewritten and retooled, until it finally reached the perfection that only years and years of development can give us. Oh, and just look at the costume of our main character. Oh god, let's just get this over with. <laughs> This film not only tops a lot of worst comic book films of all time lists, but it also tops a lot of worst films of all time period lists. And you can definitely see why. It is a special kind of bad. The kind of bad that the main characters from the producers would put together as an intentional flop to cash in on some sort of money scheme. Yeah. That bad. Wow. I'd say let's review it, but really, this is more like a study. A study in asking the questions, how, why, and... No, those are enough. Let's go ahead and study the epic failure that is Catwoman. It all started on the day that I died. We open with our main character deceased, obviously trying to symbolize the movie's ability of being dead on arrival. The day that I died <laughs> Holy crap, dude. was also the day I started to live. But we'll of course get to that later as we see the evil corporation our main character works for, Makeup! But they're trying to hide that better as the husband and wife owners of the company, the wife played by Sharon Stone, are stepping down from being its spokespeople because they just fucking look evil. It has been a magnificent 15 years, but we have decided to choose a new face to represent Eulene. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, quick word of advice to anyone joining a large corporation. If your bosses laugh like this, <laughs> <laughs> evil! Mm -hmm. Or how about if your performance creates the unforgivable sin of making Rupert Everett look so? This is not even close to what I wanted. I know I can fix it. I do not reward incompetence. I have no idea why I expected your art to show better taste than your wardrobe. You totally put me off my dick Damn. in caviar party. I bet you didn't even know we threw those, did you? But she's just too timid to fight back for herself, as our main character named Patience... Yes, our kind, quiet innocent is named Patience. The same as naming these characters Meanie, Broody, or Abel! <laughs> Still manages to get to his pity as he allows her to turn in the project tomorrow by midnight. But that's pretty tough, seeing how she can't even tell those hardcore parties with pink light bulbs to keep their music down. Excuse me, hi! Do you think you could just maybe turn the music down just... You'd better pray this isn't creating contrast for later! Yeah. It's also difficult when other people's Get pets care. like to impossibly place themselves in dangerous situations so that others would try to save them instead of doing something sensible like calling the fire department. Oh. Hey, bro! Easy! Whatever it is you're thinking, whatever it is you're feeling, it's not worth it. You understand? Now look, I'm a cop. Maybe I can help. I know! You read the reviews to the call! I'd be depressed too! <laughs> Damn! <laughs> so the cop saves her, but finds she's in a hurry to return to her everyday mundane job so every day that this guy is in the exact same spot as before mm. is the railing his desk but the cop <laughs> manages to find her and returns her wallet tom mm. god that is such a good name tom lone uh, rhymes with cone phone that's bone. lois yo the family guy not that rhyming's all that important <laughs> just be in my cubicle <laughs> Hello. just let me know hallie if you want me to be more awkward or not as attractive as you is this yours? It's nice. Thanks. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of early Chagall. Elegant, but whimsical. <laughs> you know, not enough cops use the words elegant and whimsical. I like to see it brought up in more police meetings. All right, man. We're going to take down this drug lord the old-fashioned way. What's the old-fashioned way? Elegant and whimsical. Ah. Peterson. Yes, sir. I want you to especially be enchanted and pleasant. You got it, sir. I'm gonna break into this bastard's home, kick down his door, and introduce him to a world of wonder and merriment. Hooray! Now, ready your boas. 
tradition of the old Dutch masters. I'm impressed. Don't be. I noticed all the art in your apartment, so I Googled at the office. <laughs> oh, well, that's alarmingly creepy. Yeah. I wanted to apologize to you about this morning, thinking that you were a jumper. I was hoping I could make it up to you by taking you to coffee. So he apologizes to her for saving her life, and thus invites <laughs> her out on a date to make up for it. You have to wear that leather outfit last night I got you for your birthday. Remember? I will never, ever, ever wear that leather outfit. <laughs> oh, I hope this is creating more contrast. Because if it isn't, that line would be awkward and totally pointless. But if it is, oh boy! Yeah. Oh God! What obnoxious 90s edit later. We see that our messenger to drop off her design has canceled. So she has to drop it off at Obvious Evil headquarters herself. I don't care that the FDA never saw the, the headaches and the, the, the nausea and the, the fainting spells. Those okay, is it me or is the editing in this movie out of control? When it has nothing to cut to, it will literally cut to itself! I don't care how short your audience's attention span is. Only cut when you have something to cut to! It's like a boxer who has nobody to fight, so he just hits himself. But she stumbles oh. across the plan of Corella Jane Lynch, whose new makeup line will start damaging the skin if it's not continually applied. She tries to escape through the sewers, but luckily the henchman who doesn't work there knows the exact button to push in order to flush her out. So she falls into the river, yet somehow ends up on some rocks far away from the river. Did the water just grab her? Where are we saved by the cats? embarrassingly bad animation left over from Puss in Boots, comes in and quite literally breathes new life into her. I'm not even making that up. It literally breathes new life into her. I suddenly have a need to incorporate horrible cat jokes into my life. Oh, and I'm not kidding. Everything she does the following day is related to some kind of bad cat humor. She sleeps on a shelf, lands on all fours, hisses at dogs, eats several cans of tuna, and I shit you not, this is a real scene of what happens when someone gives her cat nip. Yep. Yeah. Cat nip. Yeah. Movie. This is a third grader's idea of what Catwoman should be. Not paid writers and directors. No, I take it back. Third graders read comics, so even they would have a better understanding what makes a better Catwoman than you. Jury Newmar would be telling you to calm down. Crazy cat ladies would be calling you crazy cat lady. I is this really like your best foot forward? Years and years of rewrites and fine-tuning, and this is honestly what you've come up with? We haven't even got to the dumbass costume yet, and already I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed to look at you. It's like that kid that joins the football team, even though he's like that big, but you show your support anyway, but that turns out you shouldn't have because he's in the hospital with five fractured ribs, and he's like, why'd you support me? Why'd you show your support? It's like, I don't know. I saw a movie where a woman sniffed catnip, and it fucked me up. I mean, really, who would take being a Catwoman this ridiculously serious? Catwomen unite! Early then! We will find this nostalgia critic and force him to have us star in his review. You know, ladies, I really don't think this is helpful to the healing process. Oh, we have such plans for you. Yes, in a few moments, once we conveniently leave, that door will open to reveal a ferocious killer tiger. Ripping you limb from limb, leaving only counselor bone. Thus concluding our death trap that ties into our villainous identity. Come, ladies, we have a critic to visit. <laughs> I was about to say, this does seem like something that the 1960s uh, Catwoman would do. <laughs> it, it does very much seem what Eartha Kitt's Catwoman would do. Like, just tie a guy up, face him from the door, telling him that, oh, like, like a few moments, like, oh, a t big tiger or shark or lion's going to come out and eat you. And 
I was just about saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, this movie. It's like, why couldn't they just make her a cat burglar? Like, like how they did in the, in the recent Batman movie? Like, I mean, yeah, they did kind of do the same thing with Michelle's five first Catwoman, but, you know, it, it wasn't as ridiculous. And, you know, we got a big payout from it, you know, with her, uh, with her iconic freak out scene where she's like tearing up stuff, spray painting stuff. And, you know, we get to see her awesome outfit. Like, <sighs> Will the counselor get out of this one? Will he be the main course for our ferocious feline? Will he be ripped to shreds and left for Tiger Chow? Will his body be gnawed at until the gnawer can gnaw no more? Will he be next week's kitty litter? Will Tiger Digestion be his new iPod playlist? Will he have to spend the rest of his life as a kitty kebab? Can the counselor stand being part of a great balanced breakfast? He's already gone, dude. Is there any escape from his delicious decadent doom? Man, now I want a burger. tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Sight. Damn, now I want a burger. Man, I'm hungry. <laughs>